Look, Marnie, I am sorry, but you are not going out on Halloween. Why? I have my reasons, and I will explain them to you when you're taller. We're pumped, or pumpkined, if you will, to present this look at some of the best Halloween entertainment. But be warned, if you're looking for nightmares on whatever street you happen to live on, you can just keep looking. You heard me. Run along! Because while we do realize that a certain decade-spanning slasher saga that takes place on October 31st would be the obvious choice for a Halloween movie retrospective, we've decided we don't want to have to sleep with the lights on for the rest of the year, so we're gonna let ourselves get mired down. Or, should we say, Michael mired down. <laughs> I'm sorry. In anything that makes us scream. For example, scream. So if you want a blood-curdling breakdown of truly terrifying films featuring blade-wielding bad guys, Academy Award-winning monster makeup, and the kind of jump scares that will have you searching for a clean pair of underwear, this ain't that, okay? This is a Halloween countdown with heart. And not a still-beating one, freshly ripped out of some unsuspecting teenager who actually thought it would be a good idea to go see what that noise in the basement was. Halloween movies don't have to scare the Reese's out of you to be fun. And so, submitted for your approval, a collection of spooky but not psychotic feature films, TV specials, and series episodes suitable for enjoying with even your littlest ghouls and goblins. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> this is no trick. Instead, we're treating you to our take on some of the most family-friendly Halloween entertainment available. So where are some of the best examples of Halloween entertainment? Here being on TV. Halloween-themed episodes have been a staple of the television landscape since 1952, when America's Ozzie and Harriet Nelson brought the fictionalized adventures of their real-life family of four to the small screen. The tradition continued through the 60s and 70s. Come October, the majority of the network's hit shows would get into the spirit. <laughs> like, sometimes really get into the spirit. In the late 80s, one sitcom took such an over-the-top approach to the spooky season, it made us all wish we could go trick-or-treating in Lanford, Illinois. Oddly enough, the first season of comedian Roseanne Barr's sitcom, Roseanne, aptly named, didn't include a Halloween episode because, according to the show's star, the network head honchos thought Bible Belt audiences would disapprove. Boy, were they wrong. The show went on to pretty much define the concept of the Halloween episode by allowing the fun-loving, blue-collar Connors to celebrate All Hallows' Eve in frightful fashion for eight seasons and in their own wacky, all-out comedic fashion. The 90s saw even critically acclaimed shows like Freaks and Geeks and Dawson's Creek getting their eek on. More recently, TV comedies Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Modern Family took up the mantle, putting high priority on the quality of their Halloween episodes. Here, here children, have some candy. Happy Halloween! Ah! Theatrical releases with a Halloween hook have always been something of an event. 1991's The Addams Family took its inspiration from the campy 1960s TV series which took its inspiration from the comics of New York cartoonist Charles Adams. Hey, look, it's a young Christina Ricci. The film would go on to spawn two sequels, Adams Family Values in 1993, which reunited the cast from 91, and 1998's Adams Family Reunion, which ironically did not. Putting a family spin on the haunted house trope, Casper, a live action CGI mashup, was released in 1995. This semi-spooky tween romance was also based on a cartoon, this time an animated short from 1945. Hey look, there's a young Christina Ricci again. Wow, she really likes these uh, spooky things. 2022 saw the welcome return of the precocious and peculiar Wednesday Addams, starring in her own self-titled series on Netflix. The show was an immediate success, thanks in large part to the show's lead, Jenna Ortega. But the rest of the cast was stellar too, including Catherine Zeta-Jones, Luis Guzman, Fred Armiston, and... Oh, hey, look, it's a... Um, Christina Ricci again! Apologies, I wasn't here to greet you when you arrived. Did we mention that episodes of Wednesday were executive produced and directed by Tim Burton? You know, the guy who gave us this holiday hybrid. The Nightmare Before Christmas is the cinematic equivalent of a bulging bag of trick-or-treat goodies. Meaning, you know, 
There's a whole lot of amazing stuff in there. From the stop motion animation to the Danny Elfman pen score to the voice talents of Chris Sarandon as Pumpkin King Jack Skellington, Catherine O'Hara as his love interest Sally, and Paul Rubens as Locke. But don't let the weirdness fool you. There's a brand of wisdom to The Nightmare Before Christmas that goes deeper than just the creepy aesthetic and moody music. Jack's story is about the responsibilities of leadership, touching on themes of looking beyond what you know and seeking new experiences. It's about exploring and being respectful of other cultures and ways of life while resisting the temptation to impose one's own perspective on them. Talk about good bones. <laughs> the only thing spooky are these jokes, am I right? Coming in hotter than the burning rain of death. I summon the burning rain of death. The burning, burning, burning rain of death. Burning rain of death. <laughs> is 1993's Hocus Pocus. Ah, yes. Hocus Pocus, starring the divine Miss M herself and the equally divine Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy Najimy, this film is essentially perfect from start to finish, okay? Setting the standard for Halloween-themed excellence and introducing an entire generation to the term yabos. What do you call them, Max? Yabos? <laughs> <laughs> Max likes her yabos. In fact, he loves them. Casting Hollywood royalty Gary Marshall and his sister Penny to play a quarreling couple was a devilish stroke of genius, and the Sanderson sisters' moderned-up musical rendition of I Put a Spell on You is haunting in the best possible way. Here's a freaky fun fact. The real-life black cat who played the reincarnation of teenage Thackeray Binks actually had an audio-animatronic body double, and it was the same robotic kitty used for the role of Black Cat Salem in the late 90s TV series Sabrina the Teenage Witch, starring Melissa Joan Hart. Ah, my heart. My heart. Even freakier and funnier fact, 15 years later, Miss Hart's Sabrina was reincarnated in the form of Kiernan Shipka, who put a decidedly more spine-tingling spin on the once winsome witch's light-hearted lifestyle in the 2017 revamp The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which lasted only a short spell thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. Anyway, back to Hocus Pocus. It's definitely a family flick, okay? The witches are sillier than they are scary, and there's a very, very happy ending. It's so cute. We can't help but wonder, though, how many unsuspecting parents were asked by their elementary school age children who saw the movie, hey, um, what's a virgin? <laughs> Turns out it's a fair question, since the whole plot pretty much depends on the fact that protagonist Max is still very much in possession of his V-card, as his little sister so proudly declares. What happened? A virgin lit the candle. Hocus Pocus 2, the 2022 sequel, fills in some of the backstory blanks by giving us a glimpse of the three sister witches in their youth. The opening flashback features a stunning House of Seven Gables-esque set, and an all too brief appearance by Ted Lasso's edgy and enchanting Hannah Waddingham, as a covenless witch who disguises herself as a bird. The bird gets a couple of cameos during the story's present day action, but regrettably, Hannah's character never gets fleshed out. In fact, she never even returns to the screen. It might have been a compelling B story to bolster the otherwise trite plotline in which the two main characters get more or less dumped by their third bestie, who's dating the football star and as such, you know, has become instantly popular. Yeah, that's not old. But we do love Bette, Sarah, and Kathy, so all in all, not a bad movie. Most critics agree that it doesn't hold a black flame candle <laughs> to the original. Halloween Town is another beloved and wholesome Disney franchise. Okay, so <laughs> it's not the most sophisticated cinema you'll ever consume in your life, but the fact that it stars Debbie Reynolds, who boasts the Hollywood trifecta of having once been America's sweetheart, Elizabeth Taylor's arch enemy, and Princess Leia's real life mom, not a bad resume, gives this made for cable family flick some serious panache. This Disney Channel original movie, which debuted in 1998, is the film equivalent of a handful of Tootsie Rolls and a Charleston Chew. Classic, comforting, and undeniably sweet. Grandma, this is so totally cool! <laughs> well, there's a reason why witches don't drive minivans! <laughs> Before Hogwarts was established as the true, magical epicenter of the universe, apparently Halloween Town was the place that witches, werewolves, and other otherworldly sorts called home. Well, there was a time when humans and monsters and witches and vampires and all the rest of us could be together. Just the dark times. 
But it was a bad mix because humans feared us and tried to destroy us. And yeah, we know. Every little brother thinks his big sister Marnie is a total witch, but yours actually is. And now that she's turning 13, she's about to come into her powers. Grandma Aggie's all for it, but Mom Gwen is utterly against it. A supernatural mission to save the mortal world from a demonic coup d'etat ensues. The mastermind of which turns out to be Gwen's old boyfriend, Calabar. <laughs> can't believe Mom dated that guy. Who happens to be the mayor of Halloween Town. Seems Gwen's former boo, see what we did there, has been obsessing over her since she dumped him in high school. Well, well, you know what they say. <laughs> Thanks for humoring me. Halloween Town hath no fury like a politician scorned. In the end, Gwen decides to let Marnie embrace her magical destiny, which allowed Disney to take us all back to Halloween Town in three additional films. Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge, Halloween Town High, and Return to Halloween Town, which didn't even star, you know, the original Marnie, so. But we like Sarah Paxton. And now, that universally adored All Hallows' Eve TV special, Charles M. Schultz's enduring masterpiece, the one your parents and grandparents waited all year to watch. With commercials, you know, because there wasn't streaming or DVD or even VHS back then. So, we're talking about a real relic. Of course, we're talking about It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Need a little more info? Linus, you're up. Each year, the Great Pumpkin rises out of the pumpkin patch that he thinks is the most sincere. He's got to pick this one. He's got to. And what exactly makes a pumpkin patch the most sincere, you may wonder? Is it the size of the harvest? The shape of the pumpkins? Does it use certified organic gardening methods? Nope. <laughs> According to Linus, it's far more abstract than that. I don't see how a pumpkin patch can be more sincere than this one. You can look all around and there's not a sign of hypocrisy. Apparently, an absence of hypocrisy, it seems, was what the great pumpkin valued most. Which, you know, is an important lesson for any time of year. As sweet and iconic as this animated tale is, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention how truly unfit the Peanuts' parents were, okay? So who sends a bunch of five-year-olds trick-or-treating without adult supervision? And hello, Mr. and Mrs. Van Pelt? Yeah, it's four o'clock in the morning and Linus is still out shivering alone in a pumpkin patch. And Lucy's the one who has to go out looking for him. On the other hand, it is kind of heartwarming to see that despite being the comic strip's resident bully, when push comes to shove, Lucy's got her little brother's back. Aw. Clearly, Schultz understood character arcs. I don't understand it. I went trick-or-treating and all I got was a bag full of rocks. Halloween entertainment has many faces. Some are covered by hockey masks. Others are slathered with white clown makeup all the way up to their exceedingly prominent foreheads. If it's zombies, demons, and chainsaw maniacs you like, well, we totally get it. And Hollywood has definitely got you covered there. But if your post-trick-or-treat tradition includes cuddling on the couch, streaming movies, or watching TV shows with the lovable little monsters in your life, well, we understand that too. Because Family Values is more than just the title of a Halloween movie. And the greatest thing about The Great Pumpkin is, well, of course, that you can share it with your kids. Halloween is over and I missed it! You blockhead! And that's our video. Thanks for listening, Tonglers. Thank you.